Now the Berians were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, and did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul, restore our church. My soul, restore our church. My soul, restore our church. Yeah. 
천사 찬송하였다 우리들도 주님께 기쁜 찬송 부르자 Holy God, our Father, we thank you. On this day on which the Lord Jesus had come, we have come to worship in this Christmas Day service and we thank you for the joy to worship you. We pray that you bless your people and we pray that the glorious light of Jesus may come upon all our families. And we pray that we may be filled with joy in this Christmas Day service as you will be with us. We pray that we may meet you who are spirit and we may be filled with the Holy Spirit as we worship you. We pray in thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us confess our sins and make success for this joyful day of Christmas service. Oh. Uh-huh. 
Holy God our Father, we pray that although in the past we were slaves to the devil and we had nothing but death and sin, and yet you had sent your only begotten Son to save all people, and he came to this earth, and we praise you and glorify and honor you through him. And through, and just as Jesus had abandoned the glory of heaven and had came down to suffer because he had loved sinners, and yet we forget this truth and we follow our own desires and greed and we seek the riches of this world and the pleasures of this world and we have grieved, grieved our God and yet we pray that at this time that you would forgive us of our sins for all this and as we come upon this Christmas Day service we pray that you renew the spirits of the Sangwak people and we pray that you would shine your light upon your Sangwak people and we pray that we may understand your grace once again and just as Christ had taken his cross to take up our sins and they have now been cleansed and we pray that you would fill your life within us and we pray that your people will have the joy and hope of your life once again and although we had lived in sin in the past yet you had come for us and he and you had suffered for us and you had made us into your children we pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ may come upon us in full. And yet there are many who oppose you and your church. We pray that you would pour out your grace on those who are in the dark like this. And we pray that you deliver us by your grace. We pray that people will turn to you by the gospel of Jesus Christ and we pray that although there are people who are suffering in the COVID because of the COVID pandemic, we pray that they may have the joy of the Lord to the full and we pray that all the people who worship on this Christmas Day service, we pray that they may have the joy of your salvation to flow like a living stream and we pray for the overseer Pastor Song Young Kim that he will have the wisdom and inspiration and power of your word and we pray that all who hear this word may all receive grace and be encouraged and we pray that the senior overseer will also be strong and healthy we pray that all the church, we pray that all the church will be restored and we pray that your word will continue to be preached with this church as the center. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.
Holy God, our Father, we thank you. We give you thanks in this Christmas Day service in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and we give our precious offerings to you. We thank you for the blessings to give to give these offerings. We pray that you be with these families who have given these offerings. They have done this on Christmas Day. We pray that you bless these families, that they may continue to be filled with thanksgiving and joy. We give you thanks in this Christmas Day service. And they have given these online. We pray that you would bless them. We, press, we pray that the glorious light of Jesus may come upon them in joy and to the full. We pray that all these offerings may, may uh, continue to glorify and support God's kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray in blessing. Amen. We pray that all those who have given their earnest offerings by faith be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. The Word of God is found in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 to 28. It is found in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 to 28. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and, kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit on my right or left is not for me to grant. 
These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. So let us now pray in preparation for the sermon entitled Jesus came to serve mankind. Now let us all pray together. Holy God our Father, we pray that we may worship, to worship you on this day which commemorates the day on which the Lord came and we pray that we may be filled with joy and we pray that wherever we are we may be together by the Holy Spirit and we worship this way we pray that we may hear your word we pray that wherever we are and although although our circumstances are not as, are not as we would like we pray that you would sow your word into our hearts and we pray that we may all cooperate with your will as you help us we pray that we may prepare ourselves we pray that you would be with us and as we celebrate this this most essential day we pray that we may fulfill this with success in the name of Jesus we pray amen beloved Sangwak people in in the lives of our faith in all the days that we face we have come upon a most important day we pray we pray that we may commemorate this day and renew our spirits and we seek to emulate our lives in a way that the Lord wants and to stand before Him as the way the Lord wants. What God is jo so joyful about is that He had come to us 2,000 years ago. So to those who did not know about the kingdom, God came and introduced them the hope about the kingdom. And to those who cannot who do not aim or think of going to the kingdom, this message is useless. Yet we know that God had completely fulfilled His plan 
which was atonement, and the wall of sin had completely broken down, completely broken down. Yet, the and the Lord, and the Lord had broken down that wall of sin, by which we had no strength to overcome it, and the devil had his strong grasp of death over our lives. And yet, the Lord had cut this off, and the Lord had fulfilled this plan and the Lord was born 2,000 years ago on this day and we commemorate this. So, anybody who hears this will understand the law of God and that in that all mankind were sinners. And then this is reflected back on the devil because the devil had also done this. And the proof is clear for all to see. In the past, we were so oppressed under the law and yet the law had disappeared. Although we deserve to perish, yet God had saved us and the Lord had freed us. The Lord had freed us. So what God, what the Lord had done is that He had prepared our faith so that we can go into the kingdom. So what is most important is our faith. So we not only believe, we not only believe in the Lord, so, we have this faith. Our faith in itself is put into practice and fulfilled. So, we cannot even believe half of what, of what God has given us because the Lord Himself has done this for us. So, we have almost done nothing. And we have become the Lord's body, and we gather together as saints. And we are doing the work of the kingdom. So by faith, we know that we go into the kingdom and we do not need to do anything. This is the work that the Lord has done. He has done this for us and this has become our faith. So, what we must do is not believe but obey. So, when we obey, obedience is implied in our faith. We are those who must go to the kingdom. We need to go to heaven. So, He has rescued us from this earth and brought us into the kingdom. It is like a V-shape. We can imagine a V-shape. The Lord had come down and saved us from death and then He went back to to heaven and we must follow him because he had the Lord had done all this for us and our faith itself our faith itself when it is obeyed when it is fulfilled even though we make some mistakes the Lord has prepared everything so that we can fulfill it and we have no pressure in our faith we have no challenges because the Lord has mercifully served us. This is, this is so glorious and the fact that He has served us with His great glory and yet we, and yet this, this leaves room for our weakness because He has shown us so mercy and when and if we take it lightly when we live our lives of faith, we can show weakness. And although we have been given the condition to believe, this in itself is very hard because the Lord has just done everything for us and this itself is very hard because we are so weak. 
In any case, we must go into the kingdom and the Lord has prepared everything for us. And so on this day when we celebrate and are so full of joy, yet the world is suspicious of this. But if we ourselves do not go into the kingdom, if we are not earnest and passionate about this, then uh, this will be our own loss. So we dream all the more to go closer to the kingdom and we plan for this and this is why it's so important. This is the day on which the Lord had come and we make great determination for this. We know that the Lord had come for us. He had come for us and we not only remember this, we remember the Lord's love. We know that the Lord had sacrificed himself for us and that he had come onto this earth in the flesh to save us. And the fact that he came on this earth is not because he loves our flesh. If we think of it this way, we have lost the essence of what we are trying to say. This is something we must know. So although we live in the flesh and we move about, yet we contain, we contain all this within our flesh. So the Lord had come in the body and then he had done his work and ascended. So we have weaknesses in our flesh. We have weaknesses and flaws in our flesh, yet he has sanctified us and then he has gone back to heaven. And we will eventually come to a place where we will have no corruption and no weaknesses and we will 100% enjoy the great glory and joy of God so as those who have experienced God we will forever be with the Lord's love and joy the Lord wants us to live spiritually. He wants us to live like God. So although, so the Lord wants us to be rid of all sin and jealousy and hatred and murderous feelings and all, and all malice and deceit, the Lord had battled against all this and we experience this and we know this so that we will be like the Lord and we will dwell in the Lord's glory. We are already those who know about pain and suffering and by being forgiven of our sins, we know God's joy and we will live in the kingdom. So our flesh knows about God's love. This is the role that we have in the flesh. Yet I wonder if we do not fully know about God's love and this itself is a weakness. So we should be completely like God to be forever with God. This is the kingdom of God. The Lord had come on this earth for this purpose. So he had come on this earth. He had come on this earth and he does not make it difficult for us or make, it, make us suffer. But he had completely destroyed all hardships and challenges and he had cut off death. Yet he did not completely destroy these. He did not completely make it collapse, but he has simply cut us off from it. So we must finish the work with our hands. And although we are in this land of darkness, and just as the Israelites, just as the Israelites, just as the Israelites, when 
when the Israelites were in the desert and they had followed God, they had followed God with the light He provided in the same way. Uh, just as they had received God's love, we also must receive God's love and light by our deeds. We must do this while we are on this earth. We must bless our spirits and we must drive out all misfortune. We cannot completely drive out misfortune, but we must cut it off. So we must cut off the hand which oppresses us. And we must cut off all sin and filth because the Lord has started this and we must continue it. We are those who build up the kingdom. We are members of the kingdom. Just as it says in Revelation, there will be countless and thousands of people dressed in white. Yet there is no one in the kingdom right now. It is empty. Yet the Lord is preparing rooms for us. He is preparing rooms for us so that we can dwell there. In, in the book, there are recorded so many thousands of people dressed in white, and yet there is no one there in the kingdom yet. And he will fill us in these rooms. We are members of the kingdom. And just as we are members of the kingdom, God has made God has invited us and registered us, registered us, and although we ourselves do not have the requisite rights, yet the Lord has cut off all darkness so that we can enter. And, and the Lord has cut off all sin and death while we sing praise. He has, he has warded off all the forces of darkness so that there will be no deceit and no hypocrisy and no jealousy. In the past, we had lived like this and all these forces of darkness had dragged us down and yet the Lord had cut this off with His own hands. So our thoughts and our hearts is for the kingdom and our faith will fly like an eagle and soar in great godliness and we will go to God in all our attitudes, in all our deeds and lives and speech, we prepare ourselves. Our level of living must not be like those of the world. We know that the devil has his firm hand upon the people of this world. And what is this? Money, position. Those honor, the honor and establishment and praise of this world. So, each of us are caught in something here. Whether it be position or power, none of us can overcome it, for this is what we desire. We all are caught up in this. This is the law of this world. This is what is important for those who will, who will perish. They have a body and they seek these things and they worry about these things. They worry about this for themselves and for their children. They need these things to live. They are no different from the beasts of the earth. This is how the devil tries to keep his hand on us. And yet the Lord has cut this all off so that we can look with hope to the future and we must hand this hope down to our children. And we must make a firm determination for we know that our hearts, we know that this life belongs to the devil. So, believing is believing in God. And, and God, we must hand this great sacrifice over to our children and we must convince them and we must direct them. 
We know that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is comprised of people such as us. Who will come? No one has entered the kingdom yet. For only the Lord has entered. He is the first citizen of the kingdom. He is the king. He is the king and he has alone gone there. He had served us. And so he came with the will of God. He had mercy on us and he had saved us. He had saved us, and although we had no, we had nothing of our position, and yet people of the world are weak because they desire all money and power and authority, and people betray each other and hate each other because of money. They they speak about this and that and ideals, but they actually want only money and honor. And they are greedy for money and possessions. Yet the kingdom, yet in the kingdom, people do not betray each other for money. Yet the Lord has come to us in love, and He had done this for us. He came with the love of God in His heart. He and He had come to us, and He had. Perform this love for us. The Son, Jesus Christ, had done this, and He had come as the King for the first time, and He had prepared His people to bring them later into His kingdom. And some people, some people may have. This idea, mm, I, maybe I should make a big business in the kingdom or do this and that. Such people are unrelated to the kingdom. For God curses the proud and God hates the proud. And God rewards the humble, the humble. Yet He hates and curses the proud. James has spoken about this. Peter has spoken about this, and the Book of Proverbs speaks about this. Yet the nature of mankind is different from those who are Christians. And Christianity itself has been present in places like England. And Europe for thousands of years, and Christianity has only dwelled in in Korea for about a hundred years. And because Korea Korea modernized in such a speedy rate, and the gospel was busy being preached all over Korea. And we had simply learned about the gospel, but yet, if we are to live in the way that Christians should live, we must we must set our hearts on meeting with God's standards. And I want to preach the truth of God. I want I want to preach not about man. And I do not preach about man. And I, and I do not want to boast of man to the point that it is embarrassing. Yet the word of God, the spirit of God, the word of God, which is spirit, has come to us. And and this word will fulfill God's will, and this is the word I preach. Yet when God's word passes over us, the light of God has come upon us, and the and the and when God's word passes away. This will result in 
in side effects. And if we reject God's word, we must pay the price. Although it is fearful, we should not be afraid. We know that God's word has passed over us and the traits of the kingdom, that is, the character of God, the thoughts of God, what He wants to do amongst us, if we lose this opportunity to do it, if we lose the opportunity to do it, and this, this reign of, of the devil over us, which was cut, if, this, if it is restored again, so we know we know that in a theater, in a theater, the lights and the gas is all connected with wires. And we know that in some high-tech theaters, if you cut just one wire, uh, it is impossible because other wires are still connected with, it, with each other. And the lights do not go out. So in the kingdom, there is full of joy and prosperity. And when we fully obey God's command, when we fully obey God's command, we will be close to heaven and God's blessings will be with us and upon our children. So if we live by God's method, if we live by God's method, the kingdom will, the joy of the kingdom will be upon us and the enemy can no longer attack us. And yet, though people say salvation and praise and joy, yet some people are still connected to the reign of the devil. And this is because the devices and trap of the devil is still over such people to the full. And so God has so loved us in a unilateral way. He has loved us so much in a unilateral way. And His abounding love has come upon us. He has served us. So serving others is the law of heaven. This is the attitude of the Christian church. So although this can be expressed in, in different ways in other churches, we know that we know that love is the teaching and doctrine of God. Yet some people had previously thought that Christian teaching was to benefit people's flesh and their material lives. And yet, when there were great Roman officials who were prestigious in their authority, yet they saw the Christians and how they were doing God's work, they saw that they were seeking to build up another kingdom. And they were living for the kingdom that cannot be seen. And they did not seek the aid, they did not seek the aid and support of material, of material possessions. Uh, and they were the people, and the Romans were the people who had killed our Lord. And he is the one who had done, the Lord is the one who had done, done all this for us by his sacrifice. So love, love is the law of God. It is the sacrifice the Lord has made for us. Without the Lord's sacrifice, there is no hope for us. Yet we must not have this attitude, we must not have this attitude where authority must be obeyed and those who are lower are lower and those who are higher are higher. But such is the way of this world where the powerful oppress the weaker. So this law, this world follows the law, follows its own law. 
and the powerful oppress the weak. And when it, but if this happens in the church, the church will no longer sustain itself, although it happens in this world. So, there is nothing but this is the way of this world, how the people of this world live. And this is, this is how we must survive in this world. We must prey on the weaker and people continue to uh, increase their people continue to increase their authority and property and welfare so this is how this is how this world this is how this world goes about everything this is how society this is how society is run and so people would expand in 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 powerful groups like powerful nations and according to nations and according to peoples this is how they would amass their wealth and yet and so and so there should be many much much more movements to love each other and to care for each other so the West in the West in Western countries in Western countries the attitude gentlemanly attitude and a considerate attitude is widespread in Western countries so yet no matter how many how often I explain this it may be difficult for you to be convinced yet I'm not implying that Christianity is stronger in the West, but a gentlemanly and considerate attitude is widespread in the West. So, gentlemanly consideration, gentlemanly consideration is a powerful force to stop, to stop greed, excessive greed and ambition. It is the attitude to sacrifice yourself. It is the training that uh, people in the West had were gr had grew up on. They naturally they naturally had the attitude to sacrifice yourself. Yet if we follow our own greed, society will waste away. Yet because yet because of personal pride and ambition, the constant desire to overcome others, society itself. Society itself can only, society itself will lose its good essence. If this greedy essence enters the church, we are wasting time and the church cannot grow. We can have an outwardly good church. We can have an outwardly good church, yet if we follow this way, if we follow this way, we will not prosper. Yet the Lord has asked us that we should serve and love each other. This is, this is the issue of whether we will serve each other, whether we will truly love each other. We cannot say that we will try to change this world and then go back to the kingdom. No, we must meet with God and then follow His requirements we must receive his requirements according to his calling and this and this includes the attitude the right attitudes and the right deeds and with these we can banish the devil and we can stop his work this these are the tools that we need and although we have much greed in, although in this world there is much greed and ambition and they all have their own personal plans, plans we are not asking that we have to abandon everything, abandon all of this. Yet if, and yet, yet, 
Indeed, I do desire that my pe. They do desire that the Sangwa people will prosper in their lives and in their families. Yet what I'm asking is that we run together and we need to be educated. The Lord has constantly told us about this. He has told us, the Lord has told this to us many times. So, the way of this world is different from that of the kingdom. In the kingdom, in in the in the world, in the world, in in the world, they try to promote themselves. But those who promote others will be great in the kingdom. And I see great inspiration about this. How we have lived in this world will be reflected into the kingdom. If we had served and served others and honored others above ourselves, regardless of what position we had, it will be reflected exactly in the kingdom. And if we had constantly served, if we are constantly served others in this life, it will be seen for sure in glory in the kingdom. So I need to research this. I need to learn this about this myself. So no matter how much we serve others in this world, we will be we will be despised. So it, so I do not tell the world to serve others and to love others, but I am asking our brothers, asking our fellow believers to love each other and to serve each others. So there is one church that we serve. There is one Christian church, and we must serve and love our fellow brothers and sisters. Yet if we have this attitude, we will be eaten alive. But in the church of Christ, in the church of Christ, we know that the Lord has done this for all of us in love, done this for all of us in love, and we must carry it out. And God had performed His sacrifice for us. He had performed this ransom for us. This is a ransom for us. In the original language, it refers to release. It refers to being released. For example, we pay the price and save the person who was about to die. We release that person who was indebted. We release and cancel out his debts. And in this way, the Lord had died for us to release us, and we are witnesses. What are we witnesses of? We know, first off, we know that first, first off, what did the Lord die for? That the Lord had died for me as an atoning sacrifice to save my life from death. And He had become that atoning sacrifice to save my life. He had served and sacrificed us. So if we accept this, we will we will experience an eternal glory. So the disciples, out of the disciples, there was Peter. And James and John, sons of Zebedee, and the and these three disciples came to the Lord, and they had asked about what will happen in the kingdom. And James and John, sons of Zebedee, knelt before the Lord. This is found in some of the gospel accounts, and in some places. It is the mother who said this. 
And in another gospel account, it is just it is just those sons. And he said, let, let both of my sons sit at your right and your left when you establish your kingdom. So they had expected, they had expected that this will be a political kingdom on this earth and they had this mind they could not they could not uh, with the, with their minds of this political kingdom that the lord would establish when god's glory had come they could not understand that it was a spiritual kingdom so they asked let these sons of mine sit in your right and your left when you come in your glory so when they heard about when they remember what they were taught they only understood this in a political way and indeed it is because the Holy Spirit had not come upon any of them so this is how this is how the sons of Zebedee had thought and when when they had asked to sit at Jesus's right and left in other in other in another gospel account, the mother was saying this, and, and so the mother said, let my son sit at your right and your left in your kingdom. So James and John, James and John and their mother, he, she was called Salome, and, and Salome was uh, a close cousin to the mother of Mary. So they are they are in a sense relatives and and relatives can relatives can ask favors from other relatives this is understandable and they had this dream in their hearts but I did not want to deal with this in depth and this is and a few a few verses back a few verses back before this main Bible passage that we just read we know that Jesus had said for the for the Son of Man must suffer against the elders and the teachers of the people and then on the third day die and and the third day be raised to life so the Lord had said so the Lord had said my children I will be taken away from you in a few days and in other in another place the Lord had said after three days I'll be raised to life and then a few days after this this is when the sons of Zebedee said uh, let us sit at your right and in your left in your kingdom so this is after the Lord has sent these important words. And so the Lord had said, the Lord had said these very important words about three times concerning his death and his resurrection in Jerusalem. So there were three times in which the Lord had said, I will I will die at the hands of the elders I will be despised and spit upon and rejected and I will suffer unto death and I will finally be raised to life after three days he had said this three times he had said this essentially three times that he will die and yet they had three times forgotten about these words and so the Lord had said these important words about three times and after the third time the sons of Zebedee asked this favor of them and yet as as the Lord had spoken these important words to them they did not they did not talk about anything they were confused and in grief and then the Lord the Lord observed that they didn't say anything and he asked why and then they found he found out that they were fighting amongst themselves and this is the this is the incident this is the incident uh, concerning why the Lord had explained this to them he had explained that in the unless you 
Unless you change and become like little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. For he who lowers himself is the greatest in the kingdom. So the Lord had, this is exactly what the Lord had done. Again, the Lord had said, I tell you, until, unless you change and become like little children, you cannot even enter the kingdom of God. So the Lord, the Lord had asked, the Lord had asked, what were you arguing amongst yourselves about? The, the, te- the disciples were silent. So the Lord asked what they were discussing about on the road, yet they were fighting because concerning who will be the greatest in the kingdom. And so the Lord had said, he who raises himself up will be the lowest in the kingdom. And yet he who lowers himself to the utmost will be glorified the the greatest and unless you welcome this little child in my name if you welcome this little child in my name you welcome me and he who welcomes me welcomes my father so you must become like little children so we must serve each other in the church this is not to, this is not to have your own sense of satisfaction, but to survive before the Lord. And this is in accordance with the law of the kingdom. This is how we stand before God. And this is the way of this world. This is how the world That is, um, this is unlike the way of this world, for the world fights with each other and argues with each other and dispute and compete against each other. This is the quality of the world. Would the kingdom of God prosper if if it had these kinds of ideas? Would the kingdom of God prosper if people competed with each other and hated each other? So, the Lord had come to describe the characteristics of the kingdom. He had spoken spiritual words. I will die. And the third time, the Lord had spoke about his death and resurrection for the third time. And after, after they forgot these words, and then he finally was arrested at the hands of the chief priests and leaders and he faced an unheard of trial and in the very moment when the disciples needed to show their faith they in the brink of when all this was about to come about they had disputed among themselves and after the Lord was arrested they they fled they did not want to hear about spiritual words but they wanted to hear ideas about the world and when the time had come none of them could endure it and they all fled because in their eyes everything had ended yet this was only the beginning for the Lord and he had much work to do. He had to set up the kingdom, set up his church. He had to completely cut off the devil's reign over our lives. He had to completely cut us off from the devil. And he had, he was to drive out all f- misfortune and all the works and forces of the devil and then the kingdom of God will be proclaimed and then the forces of evil will be driven out and then all the power and authority of God would become alive and the kingdom would be prepared and when and he spoke so he spoke of the coming in the future of that kingdom but as he spoke about this all the disciples fled they refused to follow the Lord's method if they had prepared themselves by the Lord's method they they would not have fled just as the Lord had served just as the Lord had served all his people 
they themselves would have served others. If they understood that the Lord had sacrificed himself, they themselves would have sacrificed themselves. And they also would have lowered themselves and had changed them like had have changed themselves like little children, and then the Lord would have helped them. So the Lord had completely achieved this by himself. If we want to enter the Lord's kingdom, we must keep the Lord's law and we must keep the Lord's principles. And according to these principles, will the kingdom of the Lord be built up and restored. Yet if we follow our own selfish greed and ambition, we cannot do anything, we will not succeed and... We cannot make any proper judgments. We must completely cut off the devil's characteristics and completely cut off the devil's work. Hallelujah. If we reject the Lord's methods and the Lord's words and reject how the Lord wants to work about in his kingdom, he'll reject us. So we have our own affairs. We have family affairs. We have our businesses to take care of. Yet if we hold, yet we must be careful from neglecting these words. For the Lord has loved us, the Lord has sacrificed himself for us, and he himself is love. And the Lord's love itself protects us and keeps us safe. It guides us and it guides us in our lives. And the Lord's words themselves benefit our hearts and our lives. And he himself is our joy. He himself is our eternal life and eternal prosperity and joy. He himself is our benefit. If we reject him, then we are headed for danger. So the Lord's church, the Lord's church works, works amongst us and we must cooperate. If we have rejected him in the past, if we continue to reject him as in the past, we were headed for danger. If we accept the ways of this world, we must pay the price. And some people will say, oh, I can bend the rules a little bit. If we have this attitude, if we have this attitude, uh, we will not be accepted by the Lord. If we do not keep God's word, if we do not keep God's word and apply it to our living reality, we must not reject the Lord's word, for the Lord himself dwells with us. The Lord is not. The Lord is really working with us to get rid of sin and, sin and death. And we must follow this and follow the Lord's guidance. We must not let the enemy work amongst us. The Lord had said, Can you drink the cup I am to drink? So he asks, Will you drink? Are you ready to drink what I am going to drink? We know that the Lord would say in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, may this, top be, may this cup be taken from me. And we must go back to what the Lord had said before. The Son of Man will, be, will go into Jerusalem and he will then be rejected and betrayed by the chief priests and the elders and then die at their hands and on the third day be raised to life. So this is what the Son of Man will face. Are you ready to drink this cup that I need to drink? And then later the Lord would say, Lord, everything is possible. You take this cup from me. We are talking about this very cup. And the Lord had asked his disciples, are you ready to drink this cup I am going to drink? And yet the Lord and yet the disciples had just blindly said, yes, we can. The Lord might have been surprised. And they may have just been thinking about being willing to fight. And we must know that later, James would later be martyred and John would constantly be persecuted until his old death, until his old age. So, and then we go back to what the Lord said, you will drink the cup I am going to drink, but this is 
to sit at my right and left is not for me. It is not for me to decide, but for those who it is been given to. And yet the rest of the disciples found out what James and John had done, and then the Lord said, the way the people of this world try to rule over themselves, try to rule over others and to show off airs, but you are not to be like that. You are not to you are not to be like that or like or follow the ways of this world which are under the hand of the devil but we are to follow the way of God for God's words speak about the principles of the kingdom and the church I am not necessarily talking about perfect ethics in the church, for such is not even possible. If anybody, if anybody pretended to be perfect in ethics, something would be very wrong. For it is the Lord Himself who guides us, it is the Lord Himself who teaches us, and the Lord's Spirit comes upon us in full. We must be a church in whom the Spirit of the Lord is filled and we will we will continually progress and so the Lord had said you are not to be like the people of this world for they lord it over themselves but you are to be servants of the people and you to lower yourselves what does this mean to be servants of the people in the original language, it means that we are to be servants, we are to be slaves. In other places, it, in other places, it refers to deacons. And so we, and so number one, we are to be servants of the people and we are to be slaves of the people. If we want to be glorified, we must be servants and slaves. We are to be outright slaves of the people. We are not talking about uh, going. We're not talking about. We're not talking about the the idol the idle freedom to do whatever you want, but we are to be servants of the people. So we have been called to be God's servants, and this is very admirable. You do not assert your own right, but we are to lay down our, lay down our lives just like the Lord had done. We are to be servants, and this is most admirable. And to serve others is most admirable, if, yet if we are to hold to our pride, and we do not bend our pride, this is not right. So in the lonely places and in the, hard, in the hardships we face, we should serve others. And when we serve others, we emulate the Lord. And we eternally prepare ourselves for the Lord's kingdom. To serve others, to serve others is fulfilling the Lord's requirement. And we will realize that we will survive. We have survived because we served others. So, humility and serving each other is a matter of saving our lives. If we serve ourselves, we cannot save the church, but we must serve others to save the church. And this was the Lord's life. And this is how the Lord had given His command. So let us, let us, uh, let us uh, speak about this. This is, this is, the most effective and brief statement of what the Lord had done. If you have any comfort in the Lord and if any tenderness and any and any gentleness that you have received, any grace you have received, then be like-minded and be one and do not dispute with each other.
You should not seek your own benefit, but the benefit of other people. So you should have this attitude amongst yourselves, which is, which is that of Christ Jesus, who, being the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, and being found and lowered himself to the utmost, being found in the form of man, being found in the appearance of a man, and being found in man's form, he obeyed the Father even until death on the cross. So all the people mentioned in the Bible were deeply humble. So this church is like an ark of God. And this is the place where only God works, when only God's word works upon us. This is the church where the Lord himself works. So let us all serve each other in the name of Jesus Christ, so I encourage you. We are not just a normal church. But we, we are disciplined by the Lord and we face these hardships and this discipline. And there is a great will of God found here. So we should humble ourselves we should humble ourselves and celebrate in this Christmas day. So let us all the more follow the Lord and emulate Him. So let us deny ourselves and let us and let us deny our desires and save this church. We must make the decision where whether we will serve the church and then finally go into the Lord's bosom in the kingdom or not, we must make our decision whether we will serve the Lord as he has described to us. So I encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ to serve each other in this church. As I have just said, if we serve each other, we must, we will prosper. We must change our ideas and our minds. These are, these are, the, these are the principles we must follow. And then, the and then the enemy will be driven away from us. We know that the Lord dwells with us. The Lord dwells with us. And he will, he will tear his flesh. He has torn his flesh for us. And he will, he will, he will protect us with the sword coming from his mouth. We know that the Lord's victory will come to us in full. And we wait for that, bless, that blessed day in great joy with the songs of praise and thanksgiving. So I ask that we all be filled with joy amongst our families and let us fight the good fight and let us, let us have God's grace to come to us in full in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So let us only have the great victory and humility and service of the Lord Jesus Christ within ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Let us pray that we will follow the Lord's will and fulfill all His will. And so let us ask that the Lord will rule over our lives and all of our thoughts and behaviors and deeds. And let us drive out all the misfortune and darkness of the enemy. Let us ask that God will save us. Let us ask that God will save us from all misfortune. Let us seek for the Lord's success. And let us be reborn again. And let us seek that God's principles and God's law in His kingdom will be applied on this earth. And let us, all of us, restore the church and ask that God will help us. And in these efforts, in all these efforts, we will succeed. And let us all pray together. 
우리 하나님 역사하시고 도와주시옵소서 역사하시고 도와주시옵소서 오늘 하나님 나 우리 주님께서 이 세상에 또 오신 날을 기념하여 이렇게 함께 예배를 드리며 하나님이 주시는 말씀을 강구합니다 다 같이 계속 기도하시기 바랍니다 우리 하나님의 인도하심으로 받게 원하오니 오늘 현장에서 살아계셔서 하나님 말씀과 하나님의 정서와 하나님의 기질과 하나님의 계획과 하나님의 품성과 하나님 모든 영원한 하나님의 원리로서 우리 움직일 수 있도록 도와주십시오 정말 주님 오신 날 그가 자신을 희생하셔서 우리 살리셨다는 것을 모두 기억할 수 있도록 도와주시고 인도하여 주시옵소서 하나님 도와주시옵소서 Holy God, our Father, we pray that you would help all those who have heard your word. We pray that we do not worship just in outward form, but we pray that as we all listen to this this one word, we pray that by your word and by your spirit and commandment and by your eternal will, we pray that we may follow the law of your grace and your salvation and put it into practice and finally enter your kingdom. We pray that we will not return to our former lives. We pray that you will not only cut us from the enemy, but that we will continue to strive for your kingdom and in great victory we pray that you'd help all your Songwak people and we pray that although we are so tired and oppressed at these times we pray that we may all succeed we pray that you'll be with all of us we pray that we may achieve great victory we pray that we may offer everything to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray in blessing. Amen. And as we commemorate this day on which the Lord had come to us in flesh, and this is the day of most joy, and we know that God has given His great grace. Now, now is our turn. Now is our turn to serve just as the Lord had done. So as servants, let us prepare ourselves for the kingdom. We must preach this to all places. And this world in its own state is decaying and departing from the gospel of Christ. And we must make labor until the very end and in the praise that we are about to sing it has uh, inaccurate words let us i'm going to alter this slightly so with a sincere heart with a sincere heart let us sing this praise together let us all stand and sing this praise
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit come upon those who commemorate this great day on which the Lord had come to us. We pray that this may come upon all the Sangwak people forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To God who has accepted our service, let us glorify, praise, and honor Him. And to those who have succeeded in this online service, let us, I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let us clap for each other. And although we cannot physically worship together, I pray that the joy of Christmas Day will come upon you all. And we have come upon a most important day and we thank God and we make more godly determination. We mature ourselves more and we will glorify God all the more in the fullness of victory. Let us let us offer ourselves to God. So let us all take encouragement. Thank you very much. Oh! <laughs>